Hello everyone and welcome to Rewind, the retro video game show coming to you live every Friday at 3 p.m. Eastern right here on the AWS for Games channels on YouTube and Twitch. My name is Chris Melisinos and I'm the principal evangelist for video games here at AWS. And on this episode of Rewind, we're going to explore the library of the second most expensive home video game system ever released, the 24-bit 2D powerhouse known as the Neo Geo Advanced Entertainment System. Released in the US in 1991, the AES was an imposing system at its time of release. It retailed for $650, which is roughly $1,500 in today's money. And games started at about $200 per game or roughly $470 today. The original gold system came with the base unit two eight-way four-button controllers and had different pack-in games at different times. One of the most common pack-in games was Magician Lord. Other variants included Baseball Stars Professional, Fatal Fury, or NAM 1975. The Silver System was released for $399, included one controller and no pack-in games. Now with the Super Nintendo System set to release just a month after the AES launched in the US, at half the price of the AES's Silver System, but including two controllers and Super Mario World as the pack-in title, and with the Sega Genesis already in market for a full year before the AES launch, and coming with two controllers and Sonic the Hedgehog as the pack-in game, why would anyone buy the AES when you could buy both the Sega Genesis and the SNES for the same price as the base model AES? Did it make a whole lot of sense? But what made this so... Actually, it's not what made it, what made this 24-bit system more desirable or coveted than the rivals? What trick did SNK, the manufacturer of the Neo Geo, have up its sleeve to convince gamers that they should invest in the AES? Well, the answer was simple. The Neo Geo AES was a consoleized version of their full upright arcade hardware, known as the Neo Geo Multi-Video System, or MVS. The MVS was an arcade cabinet, and remember that real arcades were still a thing in 1991. And these systems could house up to six games that the player could choose from. Each game was in a cartridge format that plugged into one of the six slots on the motherboard inside of the cabinet. Arcade owners could easily rotate games in their cabinet without having to invest in completely new cabinets, making it cheaper to bring new games to players. Now, the AES, or the MVS rather, had a six slot, a four slot, like Keith Apicary here is playing on, or a two slot model. So there was a variety of them. The biggest one, of course, was the six slot. Keith right here has got the four slot Neo Geo, and that was the most common cabinet to find in arcades during that time. Now the AES home version of the MVS meant that the games you played at home were identical to the games you would play in the arcade. No ports, no interpretations. When you are playing a Neo Geo game at home, it is the arcade game, full stop. But that's also why the system was huge. The console itself measured 12.8 inches by 9.3 by 2.4 inches. And the controllers were 11 inches by eight inches by two and a half inches, almost as big as the system itself. Each cartridge was actually an arcade system board folded in half and measured six inches by seven and a half by one and a quarter inches. Now all of this repackaging of a full upright arcade cabinet was awesome, but you did need the room at home to house it all. 
The Neo Geo AES operated a Motorola 68000 running at 12 MHz and also had a Zilog Z80 coprocessor running at 4 MHz, which was also used as an audio controller. The system boasted 64K of RAM, 84K of video RAM, 2K of sound RAM, and 64K of game backup RAM. It also included a 512 kilobyte onboard ROM to help with animation, sound, and housing the system's BIOS. The AES utilized a custom video chipset that included multiple processor cores, running on a 24-bit data bus, and it's how the Neo Geo is considered to be a 24-bit system. It had a display resolution of 320 by 224 and a 16-bit color palette of 65,000 colors, of which 4,096 could be displayed on screen at once. The AES could have up to 380 sprites in the screen and display multiple background planes, allowing for some truly impressive visual effects like deep parallax scrolling at the time. The booming audio from the AES was created by the Yamaha YM2610 sound processor, providing four concurrent FM synthesis channels, three programmable sound channels, one programmable noise channel, and seven PCM channels. Now, what does all of that mean? It means the AES was capable of producing some really impressive audio, which still sounds awesome to this day. One other fantastic trick that the AES had was a removable memory card, allowing players to play games at home, save their progress to the card, take the card to the arcade, and continue playing there, impressing friends and helping to establish a new group of arcade champions. The Neo Geo AES had 157 officially released or licensed games released available with all regions combined. Later remodels of the Neo Geo home hardware would emerge as the Neo Geo CD, which replaced the beautiful and heavy AES cartridges with the CD-ROM, making the price of the games more affordable for a wider audience. However, the CD-ROM drive was a single speed drive, causing huge load times. Just not during startup, could have load times of up to half a minute or so between rounds of fighting games, really frustrating players. The Neo Geo AES was officially discontinued in 1997 and sold about 1.2 million units worldwide, with the Neo Geo CD selling about 100,000 units. Now, while the Neo Geo AES had no 3D, uh, no 3D processing capabilities, which would see it, you know, being left behind as the world started moving towards 3D games, there is no denying that it was and remains an absolute 2D powerhouse of a system, with the vast majority of their games holding up today. Neo Geo, Neo Geo games can be found available for just about every current game system, even mobile and mini arcade cabinets like the Neo Geo Mini Arcade system that comes with 40 games, a 3.5-inch screen, and HDMI, HDMI out capabilities, my goodness, uh, to bring that Neo Geo magic back into the home. In fact, that system can be found as of today's recording on Amazon.com for $60. I reviewed a bunch of earlier tabletop and mini systems in a previous episode of Rewind, and I'll provide a link in the comments. All right, all of that out of the way, let's get ready to rewind back to 1991 and check out some of the awesome games that awaited any gamer with a deep pocket on the amazing Neo Geo Advanced Entertainment System. Off to the 8-bit living room. Ooh, my goodness, here we are inside of the 8-bit living room. How's everybody doing? Yay, yay! All right, a little bit of Neo Geo chat is going to go ahead and start up here today. All right, let me go ahead and see who we have here. And I'll just give a quick, uh, you know, hey there and hi there and a shout out. All right, we're going to jump in and play some Neo Geo games now. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, hey, gang. All right, that will go ahead and kick that chat off there. Okay, so here's the thing about the Neo Geo. Well, first... First, let's get that system out here. Oh, there's the big Neo Geo console. This thing was huge, like when you, you got this thing home. I'm going to tell you some stories about the time I first um, uh, discovered the Neo Geo. Uh, let's also go ahead and play this running loop of Neo Geo commercials. By the way, that is Nathan Barnett. Amazing, amazing uh, uh comedian and physical actor and like all this crazy stuff like he he is incredible and this is one of his characters keith apicary and he did a song called neo geo and he sings about his love for the neo geo cabinet um i'm not going to play the audio here but you can go and find him on youtube the guy is freaking amazing i absolutely love all of his work all right so the neo geo we're going to go ahead and jump on to the games here i'm going to go ahead and 
stop the music in the background so we can hear the mighty, mighty tones of the Neo Geo. And if you have any memories of playing the Neo Geo back in the day or experience with some of their games now, go ahead and, you know, let us know inside the chat. Let me know if there are games you want to go ahead and see as well. So the first game we're going to go ahead and start with is one that was a pack-in game um, for a lot of the, uh, or it was a common pack-in game, I should say, uh, for the Neo Geo. And this is called the Magician Lord. So this is a really cool, atmospheric, side-scrolling uh, action game. And uh, it's a really good way to ease yourself into the Neo Geo. So let's go ahead and uh, make sure our audio levels are sounding good. Hopefully they are there. I'm going to pump this up so I can hear this as well. All right. Very good. Okay. And uh, yeah, let's go ahead and jump right into the action of the of Magician Lord on the Neo Geo. So here we go. And what's really nice, <clears throat> they, because the Neo Geo cabinets, the MBS cabinets, um, you could go ahead and play a variety of different games in the same cabinet just by the arcade owner switching them out. What they would do at the beginning of each game is they'd actually show you what all the buttons do, which was really cool to have, right, for the games, especially when they came back home. It kind of refreshed your memory uh, with regard to what you needed to do. But yeah, here's Magician Lord. And you'll see, notice, you know, as I mentioned in the opening there, uh, the multiple planes that the Neo Geo could go ahead and, and operate on um, meant that it could do really nice parallax scrolling. Okay, I need to get my bearings here. Uh, it would do really good, beautiful parallax scrolling. Um, the, all those colors just pop right off the screen on the Neo Geo. Um, the sprites were really big. You know, at the time, we were looking at, you know, the Genesis being in market for a year, the SNES coming out. And so we were really, you know, uh, left with the NES and uh, the Sega Master System as the consoles that people were playing at home. We didn't have these giant sprites, although at the time uh, we did have the NEC TurboGrafx-16 out in market and they could also do uh, some pretty large uh, sprites on screen. But the Neo Geo could put more of them on screen. Um, had better animation and much better audio, I think, than pretty much most of the systems that were out there at the time. Now, in this game, what happens is each time I grab one of those spheres, I evolve my character or devolve if I go ahead and get hit like I just did. Um, but yeah, pretty a, a pretty common standard fare uh, type of uh, uh, game here. But what really uh, did it when you first heard, you know, when you first uh, saw this game, was the music. Soundtrack on it is just ripping. It's awesome. Still sounds great today. All right, let's see. Here we go. Come on. Now, I remember when the Neo Geo first came out because uh, at the time I was working for a little company called Soft Warehouse. Actually, at this time, then I believe they'd already changed their name, maybe to Comp USA. And I remember when we got this thing in, none of us could believe, well, first of all, how big the damn box was. It was huge. And like when we were out there on the, the uh, you know, the retail floor, having to stack the end caps and stuff, we were like, oh my God, you know, what is this thing? Um, but it was just awesome. The cartridges were also massive too. They were the size of like, oh, of, you know, like a uh, hard covered book. Oh, man. Oh, now I think it's going to go ahead and pop me right back to the beginning, right? Oh, no, no. Good. Okay. It's stopping right there. Um, how much time did the team ever sp uh, <laughs> spend playing the demos in the store? Yeah, we played a lot. We, we played a lot. I also remember we had... Hey, there we go. I also remember we had um, the Sega Game Gear had come out as well. So we had this color display in the store. And then, of course, we got the uh snes showing up and yeah you know w you know look i mean you know working retail as kids especially in a computer store like that i think we were playing games all the time and getting to experience a lot of new games that our friends uh didn't have the chance to to play so we got to taste a lot of of games and systems all the time there it was it was pretty awesome okay let's see come on oh come on 
Oh, just brutal. Just brutal. I mean, the problem, right, is you're trying to avoid these, but, uh, yeah, you know, coming at you, but you're pretty tall as a sprite, so it makes it uh, a bit difficult. Plus, you got to avoid all those spikes coming down from the ceiling there. And, it, yeah, you got to turn around and turn your back to your enemy. That's not... That's not the Magician Lord way. Damn it. Actually, it is the Magician Lord way. He never... Oh, my goodness. Anyway, so that was Magician Lord. This is one of the first... This was one of the original pack-in games. Now, the Neo Geo was really known for its fighting games, um, which I have to admit... I suck at. I, I'm just really not good. Just because I wind up playing so many different games all the time that I never put enough time in to learning all the different moves and things like that. But I'm going to show you one of my favorite fighting games um, on the Neo Geo. And I remember, too, when I experienced this for the first time, and it wasn't uh, the second game like I'm going to show you here, but it was the first one. Samurai Showdown on the 3DO. Right, just blew us away when when we saw that thing, and of course, you know, playing it on the Neo Geo, you get the actual arcade version, not the a home port like you got on the 3DO. But yeah, this one. Okay, so here we go. Um, we have a a B button, strong attacks with weapon. C button will be your light kick. D should be your medium, and then together should be strong. Yes, very good. Twice for dash, backwards twice for jump back. All right, let's go ahead and... Okay, yeah, see, this is where, this is the problem with playing a lot of fighting games and stuff like that is, I'm not gonna remember all of this stuff. So, um, what I'm going to do is, uh, let me see, let's reload our, our player here on our twitch stream so i've got two streams going on simultaneously so all right here we go yeah let's just go ahead and jump right in this will be a button mashing nonsense um the fighting games but wasn't the controller still a four button controller yes yes it was excellent excellent memory it was a four button controller and that's why you had those combo presses instead of having like a separate button for a uh, low mid or high you had low, mid, and then press together for a high. So that's how they got around it. Um, but uh, one of the things that this game did really well, right, was introduced really sprite scaling into the play. So as I back up, you see the screen, uh, the, the camera kind of zooms out for us. And uh, as you get closer, it zooms in. And that was a really cool effect that we had at the time. You also notice there were foreground elements like the wheat that I just cut through. Come on. All right, let's see. Come on. There we go. And there we go. So now I've got to be careful because... Ah, there we go. Oh! Come on, here we go. Let's, let's go get him. Come on. Oh my god, if I lose now, that would be terrible. Victory! Excellent, excellent, yeah. Really, really cool. And, and notice again, all the depth of animation they've got going on in the background there. Right, the multiple layers of that wheat. Um, you can hear the wind blowing. And that's the other thing too, is that I think it had four channels of, come on. I think it had four channels of um, sampled sound. So you have really clear voices. You, know, you can hear the wind in the background. That's a really strong, sam uh, really good clear sample as well. Again, you know, home systems didn't have this, but again, you weren't playing a home system. You were playing the arcade game. Oh, oh. the mighty Neo Geo. And I wish I was playing uh, the uh, Keith Apicary song. It's so good. Oh, look at him. What's he throwing out there? Come on. You know what? I was looking at the wrong place. Come on, get out of the way. Here we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's exactly how you do that. <laughs> Look at that. Isn't that right? Yeah, we got all the buttons going off right now. Uh, let's see. You did get the two extra buttons on top, which helped with games such as Mortal Kombat. Yeah, absolutely it did. You know, with those two shoulder buttons that you had on the SNES uh, controller. But it still wasn't a standard layout, right? So you'd go to the arcade and try to pull up those same moves. Really difficult to do. The Neo Geo, though, it's the same four-button layout that you had at home. 
that you had in the arcade. And so if you could go home and perfect your techniques, um, you could then go ahead and save your progress on the memory card and then go ahead and bring uh, the card to the arcade, continue where you left off. So, you know, again, instead of spending all that money at the arcade, uh, you could just do it at home and get better and then go to the arcade and play. So it was really an advantage. Yeah, a good call out on the sound. I think it's 8-bit uh, NES processor and the simplicity audio in those games. I remember writing programs to Pascal Longo that reminded me of 8-bit NES sounds. Yeah, agreed. But um, and there is there is a lovely quality to those uh, you know to the old NES um, uh, soundtracks, right? And audio. Like one of my favorites, of course, which is an iconic one, is uh, the Ducktales you know, theme, listening to it on the NES. Oh, su such good memories. Yeah, but the audio for uh, for this, pretty incredible. Right? Okay, yeah, so gotta tap those buttons rapidly. So anyways, this is Samurai Showdown 2. Um, really good, a pretty, not deep, but uh, moderately deep fighting game. Really good graphics. Uh, you know, again, it, it, it introduced that um, that that scaling in and out that uh, just we hadn't seen before, right? And home system can really do. Look at that. And then you also have things like yeah, power up being thrown into the the play field. Oh no, we didn't want that happening there. Anyway, so that's Samurai Showdown. Till we got a lot more to go through. Oh my goodness, we're already 20 minutes in. We have a lot more to go through. So let me go ahead and stop Samurai Showdown two. And let's go ahead and jump into, actually, let's jump into my favorite side-scrolling shooter on the Neo Geo. And this is a game that I've purchased on multiple, uh, multiple systems before. And again, it's available for a wide variety, including on your phone and, and things like that. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and pop a little music in here. Let's we'll keep it going in the background while we don't have the Neo Geo up. This one is called Blazing Star. So my favorite vertical scrolling um, uh, shoot 'em up is um, Raiden, right? And Raiden 2. Excellent, excellent, excellent vertical uh, shoot 'em up games. This is my favorite side scrolling one, along with like the R Type series and things like that. And we're just gonna we're just gonna sit here for a moment. We're just gonna sit right here and listen to the music here. We're gonna look at this incredible opening animation. You can bop along if you need to, because it is just that juicy of a track. And uh, yeah, the audio in this one, the the scene setup, and then the narrator that's speaking over, hilarious <laughs> and awesome. All right, here we go. Mm -mm -mm. All right, that's the opening. Let's go ahead and jump right into Blazing Star. Blazing Star. This is how you play, only two button. So now you can choose, you know, what your weapon loadout is going to look like. I always choose Hellhound, I like. And I'm gonna stop talking for a minute. Let's listen to the opening here. I lied, I'm gonna talk. So um, if you hold down your, your fire button and then let it go, you unleash a barrage of, uh, of you know, bullets there. And so what makes this game also tricky, right, is that it balances your greed and completionism with the enemies that are on the screen. So you have to spell the word lucky, you have to pick up your power-ups, and you have to pick up those gems. So the worst is when you're not seeing the lucky letters pop up because you're busy looking at something else and then you miss spelling the word. It's so damn frustrating. But also, listen to the audio there, like the bells in the background. You've got this multi-layered audio track that comes in. It's just really unique at the time. It created, you know, incredible soundscape uh, for Neo Geo games. We're going to get into a couple of the other big ones, like uh, the Metal Slug series here in just a little bit. Um, yeah, your narrator there. Get it more! Okay, I'm trying to get it more. Ah, collected all the lucky panels. Get that event item. Boom! If Metroid Contra Life Force and 1942 United, this is what it would look like. Yes, yes, that's exactly right. 
That is exactly right. Oh, I totally feel that with this. Absolutely, absolutely. All right, here we go, here we go. Look at that, all those pieces blowing off there. And then, all right, we've got our weapon fully charged, so we'll go ahead and hit him twice. And the good thing is that this, this enemy kind of telegraphs pretty well where they're going to shoot. So it's not, of course, I said that now I'm gonna probably die, right, playing it. Um, so it's not too difficult uh, to, to beat. Nope, see, I just blew it. I just died, right? Um, and I love that too, when you die and then she says, are you serious? Yeah, like, hey, I'm doing the best I can. That disembodied voice. I don't have to worry about getting shot by these, uh, these bosses here. You beat it! All right, yeah! Oh, oh, yay! Woo! Your skill is great, apparently. But just a few moments, moments ago, she was chastising me, right? So I don't get it. Rank B? Mm. No, 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 no. That should be rank A. All right, let's go ahead and jump into stage two. Look at that parallax in the background. Ooh, I mean, it wasn't 3D, man, but it sure felt like it. You know, you it, it's... That's just all set dressing in the back there, but um, man, the Neo Geo could move some sprites. Could just move some sprites. Yeah, waking up? Yeah, we'll take it. Small victories for sure. <laughs> for sure. Oh, we got a couple uh, of lucky. Okay, I got, I said I got all four panels. Oh, out okay. there. Oh, and there we go. That's Blazing Star. Really an amazing, it's an awesome, awesome, um, side scrolling shoot them up. Definitely one of my top 20 games of all time. Um, yeah, definitely a, a game to pick up if you're interested in Neo Geo. And I believe it's, like I said, it's on everything from the iPhone to, uh, I believe, the Switch. And you can find them in different uh, packs and all kinds of stuff. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's uh, this is a great one. All right. Let's go ahead and change those modes up a little bit. And let's jump into a little bit of puzzle playing action. This one, again, another fantastic. And the games that I'm showing uh, here are really considered to be, like I try to do in every re Rewind episode. Um, oh, okay. If Blazing Star was 1998, how did it compare to Polestar of 1995? That is a great question. Polestar, another great game. We're going to go ahead and play that one next. I should have jumped into another side scroll, but I'm trying to mix it up here and give us a little variety. And uh, yeah, we're going to do some Puzzle Bobble. This game, you've seen it on basically every video game system possible. And if not Puzzle Bobble, you've seen it and known as Bust a Move here in the States. You've um, also seen like Snood and these sorts of games. Basically, it's just a match, a match game where you have to go ahead and um, match those colored bubbles and clear the board. The really cool thing is you'll see here is that when you're playing this game, um, you are advance or rather when you are playing and you're playing against the computer or you're playing against uh you know another opponent when you eliminate a, if you eliminate four or more bubbles at once the the fourth bubble up gets placed into the opponent's play field and so you're not only battling time you're battling the bubbles dropping you're also battling your opponent dropping more uh, bubbles on your side. So let's see. Mm, 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 mm. So now all these bubbles drop and you can see the other bubbles lined up at the bottom of the play field on my opponent's side to let them know that they were about to get yeeted big <laughs> by these bubbles coming in. Uh, okay, yeah, here we go. Nice big fat stack of red bubbles. And you see they're going to line up there at the bottom for the opponent. So you have to go in and clear this out before... There you go. I didn't even need to clear my uh, my side out because my opponent lost. And then we move on through the, uh, the rest of the stages here. Let's see. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Love the music in this one too. And this is... It's got... It's just an earwig... Uh, song, you know, it just stays in your head. Oh, shoot. Yeah, that's the other thing, too. You have to make sure that other bubbles, if you're lined up to do your next shot, that other bubbles that are going to get placed in the play field don't mess you up, just like 
that one did. So I am, let's see. Shoot. Okay, so that was a bad placement because now it's right down there at the bottom. I got to get that one out of there. Otherwise, I'm about to lose this round. And that's not what we want. I mean, maybe it's what you want, but it's certainly not what I want. All right, here we go. The SNES port of this game, too. And it is iconic. Absolutely, it is. 100%. Um, and it's one of these things, too. Now that you're hearing it, you're not going to be able to unhear it for the rest of the weekend. Look at that. I was just about to lose that. And no, that wasn't me. That was them. All right, let's see. What's also really cool about this one this game, if you're playing in the, um, if you're just playing in the puzzle mode, uh, they have branching paths that you can go ahead and take. So you can basically build, uh, you know, choose different paths, different puzzle, uh, puzzle, uh, uh, kind of layouts as you, uh, as you move through. So it offers a lot of replayability and that was really good for, for the home, right? Because... Yeah, just because. I have no other comment other than that. Shoot. Okay, they're going to stack those up. Dang it. Dang it. Dang it. Dang it. So, yeah. So, this is the competitive side of Puzzle Bobble. And see, I went ahead and messed myself up there. Right there because I added two of those greens. And I shouldn't have done that. Can I get that blue in there? Nope. Because I'm... Oh, womp, womp. Okay. So, I lost this one. Let me show you the, the puzzle side of this, though. No, we're not going to continue. And you can go ahead and, uh, let's see, there's triple A's right there at the top. All right, game over. Let's go ahead and look at the puzzle side of this one. And uh, I'll show you what I'm talking about. All right, so we do the puzzle game side. I love that yell too. See, so now you've got these branching paths. You can choose which way you want to go ahead and move. And that's Bub that you are operating there. So now what you have to do is... Clear out the whole screen as fast as... Look at that! Oh, in two seconds! My goodness, how does he do it? Yeah, so basically, it just stacks up a bunch of these different uh, puzzles for you to go ahead and beat. And we're going to do that here pretty readily. And then the faster you go, you get uh, um, more bonus points. So you want to try to clear them out as fast as you can. So let's see, this one will clear all of those. We've got one, two... Drop that one, 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 and done. And so, yeah, so it's it basically just sets up the, the levels for you to have to go ahead and clear. So much fun. So much fun. And super approachable, right? So if you, if you, you know, people in your household that don't play video games um, or they don't consider themselves to be a gamer, you know, this is a really fun game to get even non-gamers in, right? Really easy to jump in. It's you know, puzzly based versus pure action, but there's still strategy to it. And there's still um, a bit of panic that happens because you have to, <laughs> you know, clear it out as fast as you can. Um, and so I say this because like my wife who does not play video games at all, um, this is a game that uh, she enjoys playing, you know, like on, uh, on different systems and uh, on, couple of the arcade games that we have in the house and yeah it's it's just a ton of fun to play love 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 puzzle ball and now my problem is i really can stay here all afternoon and just play this game but we're gonna go ahead and stop it right here and that is puzzle bobble what do you think of that one yeah hey yeah that one is a really good one all right so since the thames went ahead and asked which by the way thank you for that um let's go ahead and bring up polestar another side scrolling shoot him up um again it's con this is considered really in like one of the top 30 right of the um of the neo geo games we're gonna go ahead and pop this up here i love to the the little opening animation and audio that they've got really really good do love that do love that okay here we go So you you will see that basically, as you know, as any uh, game system sees, the longer developers go ahead and work with, uh, you know, work with the console and, and continue to uh, learn how to develop for it, the more they learn to wring out of the hardware, right? Um, 
And so that's what we're going to take a look. All right. So uh, we had here from KDog2K. Chris, what are some hidden gems on the Neo Geo that you would recommend? Ooh, that is a tough one. Uh, I'm holding back on some Metal Slug 3. And that was from the Thames of the Bob. No, no, we're going to do Metal Slug 3 for sure, for sure. Um, yeah, let me think about that. Uh, hidden gems. Hidden gems on the Neo Geo. You know, my my thing is uh, the ones that I that I really like. They're not hidden. They're ones that I play, right? So, um, yeah. Let me uh, let me think about that. Super Spy, maybe one of them. Um, now, what you'll also notice too, as I mentioned, you know, what some of my favorite side-scrolling shooters are. Uh, like R-Type uh, falls right in there as well. So this has got a real R-Type vibe to it. Um, and you can see that, you know, it, the graphics aren't as complex as we saw in Blazing Star, uh, Blazing Star or as layered, um, but still a really beautiful, uh, beautiful game. And this is one of the early ones, one of the early shooter, uh, shooters for, um, for the Neo Geo. My goodness, I'm just getting my... My uh, rear end handed to me on this level here. Uh, let's see here. Come on. Come on. Let's go. Let's go. Right. And I. Oh, see, he's in actually in the background, so I didn't really need to avoid him. That was the other thing, too, right? It's, it's not always easy to figure out where you are in relation to the objects on the screen. Uh. Like that, again, that first enemy boss, I was able to go and actually touch parts of the sprite that didn't uh, cause me to, to blow up there. The one thing that I, you know, our type used to do this too. I always found it was a little cheap, right? Wake up. Okay. Oh, whenever I hear that, uh, wake up, dear friends, it's midnight. Um, I, that's uh, the theme song from A Clockwork Night, which is one of my favorite games on the Sega Saturn. Anyway, uh, so one of the cheap things that some of these games did is like when an enemy is about to leave the screen, they fire at you from behind you. Like literally right as the last few pixels of their, their sprite are exiting the screen. I always thought that was cheap, you know? It's That's like the cowardly way to go ahead and win, game. Right? You don't do that. I wasn't even looking at you when you fired at me. Right? If you're going to do that, face me and do it. So, yeah. I, but it just makes it a bit more challenging, right? And if you learn some of the patterns uh, for some of these levels, you can, you know, you start to predict it. Come on. Man. Narrow corridors, too. Oh, my hand, too. Starting to fall asleep here. All right. Let's see. Let's... See if we can just uh, get a little bit further into it but yeah look you know for we're comparing uh something like blazing star which was really done at the towards the end of the system's commercial life versus pulsar which is done really at the beginning both excellent games both excellent games it really didn't matter the the age or time really really good so that is pulsar all right um let's go ahead and take a look at a sports game on the Neo Geo. Um, they had, you know, few and far between, right? Mostly soccer or baseball game, which we're also going in and play. Um, but this is Neo Turf Masters. This is one of the finest golf games, not just of this generation, but I still find it super playable today compared to you know, even the, the newest uh, games. I was playing one of the newer um, uh, golf games by EA, and I'm just like, the controls are just it's too much. Like, why did we mess with this this simpler, you know, uh, control system that we've come to know and love in golf games, right? Understanding shot meters and understanding how to go in and do club select and everything. Like, it's, it's just become too difficult. You know what it reminded me of? It reminded me of um, the changes that were made going from uh, Jet Grind Radio or Jet Set Radio to 2 and removing a lot of the like graffiti mechanics which constantly would mess you up. You'd have a good run, a good flow going through the game. And then you'd get to a graffiti point and you're doing these weird motions with the thumbstick. No, just let me hit the button, spray the can and go. Same thing here. Super approachable, really easy to understand, but a great ass game. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, 
Let's go ahead and do a little bit of stroke play. The young hero is who we'll pick there today. Let's go pick the challenging course in Japan. And here we are. All right. Final day. All right, my ranking is 15th. Boy, that sucks. Yeah, way better than PGA Tour Golf 1990 on your Tandy 1000 TL2. I had a Tandy 1000 as well. And back then, I replaced, I think it was the 8086 processor that was in it with an NEC V20 processor. And what it did is it removed like the uh, instruction or it reduced the instruction pipeline from like four or five operations to like two or three. So basically you squeezed a little bit of, uh, of juice out of the machine. And back then, it was noticeable enough in the games that you were playing, right? Just that little incremental. Oh, look at that. Yeah, right there. You're not allowed to have air horns on the course, but, you know, for the mighty Neo Geo we can. And let's see, am I going to hit it there? <gasps> That's right. That's how you do that birdie shot. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, um, uh, K Dog up there, 2K over there on Twitch says, Hey, I've heard great things about this golf game. I need to check it out. Absolutely. It is a fantastic game. I mean, listen to that music. It's jazz as well. Like, oh, and so, I'm sorry. Also, uh, the Thames, you're saying that your system is still alive? That's fantastic. All right, here we go. Let's see. Where's the wind coming in from? The wind is facing us there we got 260 yards rest is for uh we're gonna go nose right up against that sand trap so what i can do is turn a little bit here and let's go ahead and let's overpower this one and hit that straight on stay out of the wind we should be yeah left of those sand traps oh your tandy 1000 is still alive that is freaking awesome yay for the tandy 1000 I'll have to do an episode of Rewind on the Tandy because the Tandy computers back, you know, in, in that era, they were amazing. Uh, compared to the IBM PC uh, of the time, Tandy had enhanced graphics. Oh, they had enhanced audio as well, um, which is also why if you go back and play a lot of those old DOS games um, and you choose San uh, Tandy Sound, yeah, a lot of uh, Ken and Roberta Williams Sarah online games on it. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, really uh, amazing, right? The Tandy 1000 was, or the Tandy line was a, a pretty awesome uh, line of computers there. Oh, look at that. I completely flubbed it there because I was trying to go in and, and put it up high. Let's go ahead and let's go ahead and just keep that straight until we can just get it out of there. Uh, at least, all right, right past the skirt on there. Um, yeah, I have just a lot of fond memories of uh, messing around with the uh, Tandy computers. Here's one of the things they did do, though, that wasn't... Uh, that, that was uh, a bit, uh, not anti-consumer, but it's a way for them to go ahead and just get more money, right? Is back then, most uh, additions that you would put into a PC were all kind of hooked into IRQ5, right? Interrupt 5. I, and I believe it was this way. I may have the numbers reversed, but Tandy Base had all their set set to IRQ7. Maybe it was the other, no, it was IRQ7. So what that meant is if you had a peripheral that you're adding to your machine or a card internally, um, you had to buy a Tandy version of it because off the shelf PC parts just wouldn't work correctly. So when I was working at CompUSA, uh, I want to pick up a 40 megabyte drive and spent about two days desoldering and then resoldering system level jumpers on the controller card to figure out uh, what the IRQ setting needed to be. And I got it to work. And so I was able to go ahead and uh, get a much cheaper drive. Or my Tandy at home there. Yeah, and so uh, the Tem says, this golf game is totally playable. You're making me want to get Neo Geo into my console collection. You have a 10 year old and they love playing the classics. Oh yeah, this is, this is a really, really good one. 
Um, and then we had here at the top, K-Dog 2K. What's your opinion of all the various Neo Geo mini consoles that SNK licensed out? Are they worth looking into? And is the emulation accurate enough? So here's what I'll say is that um, while we're pulling up the next game, and that next game is going to be just one of the, you know, one of the best uh, on the system, which is Metal Slug 3. So while we're booting that up, uh, so... Here's what I would tell you at the top of the show. I mentioned that on a previous episode of Rewind, um, we went ahead and reviewed a bunch of the mini uh, kind of tabletop arcades, you know, and arcade systems. And one of them happened to be the Neo Geo one. I think it's $60 right now on Amazon.com. So if you go there and check it out. Just look for the uh, the international versions, little blue and white cabinet, three and a half inch screen comes with 40 awesome games on there. That's a really good one. Now, the, there was another one called the Neo Geo X that was released several years ago. And the problem with it was the emulation on it just really was not good. Um, it had issues with screen tearing. It had issues with latency in the controller. I mean, the cool thing was is that it was a portable handheld machine, but it would slot into a replica of the original AES that was then connected to your TV and it had the big AES controllers that you, that you could go ahead and play with. Not worth getting. It just wasn't good enough. But this small tabletop SNK, um, the, uh, the Neo Geo Mini, I believe is what it's called. Get the international version, fantastic. Really, really great. And you can plug in external controllers that they also sell that uh, work really, really well on that mini system. So yeah, definitely go ahead and check it out. I think the emulation, let's put it this way. There's been enough time and distance between when you played in the arcade to that set top or that, that little mini one that the emulation will feel just fine. Will feel just fine. All right. Let's go ahead and jump into Metal Slug. Anybody that's ever played on the Neo Geo, they know exactly what this game series is. And it is the best. The, the best. This one... Just really crazy enemies, really over the top animations. Um, and yeah, you will, uh, I mean, your hands will go numb playing this game. So it always helps to, to play with a friend because plus it's more fun when you play with your friend. Um, yeah, but just look at, you'll see how many enemies we're gonna get on screen. Look at the animation, how detailed all the animation is on the enemies, right? Um, their idle animations, their walk animation, even the jump, right? Um, those little crabos are, uh, you know, extending their bodies and, and, all, and all that stuff. Okay, I'm gonna run, oh, can I move it down here? No, I think I have to come up here. Oh, all right, let's go ahead and and do that and then can I jump down there? No, I can't. I needed to take that bottom route and that would have let me go in and get the metal slug and start uh, using it. Oh, bananas, I don't want that nonsense. I need to fire here, buddy. Oh, that's the other thing too is being able to jump and fire up and down. Ooh, made it so much more playable than other kind of run and gun type of games like this uh, uh, of, of its era, right? Think about all the button mashing. Did Neo Geo have controllers? Uh, like NES had such an NES Max advantage to help with repeat button presses. That is a good question. There may have been third-party control. Actually, I don't know if there were really third-party controllers that had, um, you know, auto fire, right? Uh, because the system, look, you know, this system was so expensive at the time when it came out. Uh, well, actually, it was so expensive at the time it came out that the only people that really could afford it would have been uh, the people that bought the Neo Geo, right? They would have been out there buying those extra controllers. But I don't, I've never come across a, a Neo Geo controller that had a rapid fire, um, you know, button to it. All right, let's see. Let's get on this boat here. Let's go ahead and rescue our buddy here. And then let's hop from boat to boat. Oh! blowing up these enemies listen to that music too oh man and if you're playing it like on big speakers and stuff fantastic okay oh shoot i got off the boat there i needed to stay on the boat and so now you're dealing with not only moving left to right 
and look at your enemies coming from all directions, but you are also having to make sure that you don't miss your footing on that boat. All right, here we go. Ah, oh, shoot. Okay, yeah. And then you have um, something that I really haven't been firing off here. Shoot. Oh, are the, uh, the grenades as well that you can use to, to blow up your... Uh, shoot. Ah, oh, come on. Come on. Oh, man. All right, I'm, I'm just putting my controller down on my knee here because otherwise I'm not going to be able to, to do that. Let's see. Oh, let's throw some credits in there. What's fun, too, is to explain to kids playing today what credits are, what we meant when we said that. <laughs> what we meant were quarters, not, you know, Dave and Buster cards and stuff like that. Also, notice that I've eaten too many of the, uh, of the drops. And so now I'm a little heavier there, and it's going to be harder for me to move. They just, it's humorous. It's really tongue in cheek. I mean, it is, you know, it is an 80s Rambo movie come to life on this machine, and it is just so much fun to play these crazy ass characters as well. Oh my gosh. Aladdin's castle tokens. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. Okay. And you got off the boat. Okay, yes. Yeah, so and now let's go ahead and jump into and this is why it's called Metal Slug, y'all. Because now we've got this boss ass tank. Look look at the size of that enemy that we have to go ahead and fight. Okay, and I am gonna I hold my hand up. Oh no! Oh shoot, I didn't mean to do that. What happened was I ejected from the ah! Shoot, God bless you. Okay. Ah, oh, man. This is why, this is why you really need arcade controls on this stuff and a friend to help with. Yeah, what is he doing leaving new munitions down there at the bottom? I can't do that. Got to run away and then turn around and fire. That's kind of cheap. No, no, no. Come on, come on. All right, all right. Ah, oh, gosh. Yeah, even when you got hit with, um, with, uh, the, uh, whatchamacallit, with the fire and you burst into flames there. So cool. Come on, come on. Man, just this game is, that's what I was saying. This game is brutal. Brutal. And fast, too. Really, really fast. Come on. My goodness gracious. No, we're not going to continue. That's Metal Slug 3, one of the best games, if not the best game on the Neo Geo. All right, let's go ahead. Let's see if we have time for one or two more here. Um, do, 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 what are we going to pick? Yeah, you know, let's go ahead and look at a couple of, yeah, exactly right. Um, okay, look, there is no review of the Neo Geo without... Wind jammers, right? Am I right? <laughs> this is the game that I believe Jeff Gerstmann uh, either loves or hates, depending on the day. Um, but uh, yeah, wind jammers, and I believe it was um, Iron Galaxy that that did a new version of this. Um, but yeah, this is uh, <laughs> a a. Uh, uh, what should we call it? A disc-based or frisbee-based sports game, kind of like um, volleyball, right? Here we go. Wind jam, except you have to score. It's actually, it's not like well, it's like a cross between volleyball and hockey. And let's see. And it's what it really is. Oh, get in there. What it really is is air hockey, right? But just in this absurd, ridiculous way. Okay, you gotta lob that there. Oh, point goal right there. That was a good volley, though. Oh, oh, look at that. If there were a windjammer, I remember there were windjammer side tournaments at Evo. Yeah, yeah, there, there were for sure, for sure. This game, uh, you either love it or you hate it. Um, and learning how to do the different throws and moves, right? Oh, I didn't mean to do that. Let's see. Come on, just let me get one. 
Oh, no. Oh, couldn't get down there. Could not get down there. Wind jammers. I know I'm going to be ripping through the last couple of here because uh, we're almost out of time uh, for today. Boom. Let's see. Yay. All right. There you go. At least, at least we got one across the line, right? One across the line. Wind jammers. Awesome, awesome game. And yeah, fights will ensue playing that game with your friends for sure. For sure. Definitely a competitive game. So much fun to go ahead and play. All right. Um, let's see. Another one that I do love is Cross Swords. Um, yeah. Air hockey meets paddleball. At first, I was reading that saying pickleball, and I was like, pickleball? Um, but uh, no, it is. Yeah. Paddleball for sure. For sure. So this is a really interesting, um, you know, action game because... Um, you do everything kind of facing into the screen. You can see through the outline of your character, which is really cool. So it almost looks a little like Punch-Out. Um, and you have the enemies kind of scrolling up to you. So this could do these massive scrolling type of, type of games or scalar games like Sega used to do, right? Outrun and, and those sorts of things. Um, so yeah, lots of... Well, let's just let's just go ahead and dive into it. Let's stop talking about it. Let's just go ahead and dive into it. Let's look at chapter one, disaster in the poor village of Dio. So sad. Okay, here we go. What's this guy running up on me for? Please help us. Monsters are attacking our village. We got some junk. Okay, that was a bit aggressive, right? So you can see through and let's see. And so you have to time all of your stuff here. You have enemy meters right there at the top, and then you'll progress in a second. Let's see. And, oh, look at this baddie right here. And then I think we walk forward. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Okay. And what are we going to do next? Oh, no, it didn't walk forward. It's just scrolling in. But, you know, really interesting concept. You know, like I was saying, the uh, Neo Geo didn't have any 3D capabilities. So it is, uh, this is about as close as we got, right? Um, there is one called the uh, Super Spy, and we'll go ahead and pop that on real quickly here too as well. But Cross Swords, really fun game, right? And the good thing is that, you know, they provide that uh, ability for you to, to see through your bot the, your character so that way you can see when the attacks are going to come shoot I'm, oh of course i'm not paying attention to anything you can see i'm raising the shield oh come on okay this guy and there we go so that is a little bit of cross sword so all right let's go ahead and jump into two more here uh the super spy and so this will have a, much like Shinobi did, will have an, uh 3D, right? Or you're firing into the, the background uh, mode here. So let's see. Here we go. Let's go and push our start button. There we go. So we are using the A button to punch. Use the B button to kick. Choose a weapon with the C button. Press the A button to use it. All right. So let's go ahead and start. Yeah, there we go. Oh, kick that, punch that guy. Okay, and then, right, and so that's how you're able to do that. So then you can move, I think, up and in. Right. Terrorist camp and arms factory. All right, so you, we're just making our way through. So this is, um, you know, a typical type of game for, for its era. But you notice, like, look at the sprites, you know, when that guy came down to attack me. Oh, no. So, Super Spy. Fun game. Uh, not really not one of my favorites. I don't know if I said it was. It's a fun game, but uh, it's, it's one that I go back to all the time, right? Let's see if we've got one more to round it out here today. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. How about one more side scroller? And this one is called Sabalip. And here we go. Oh, no, I'm sorry. This is a side scroll. This is a run and gunner, right? This is a futuristic action run and gunner. So let's go ahead and do that. Arm select is C, A button to shoot. Okay, there we go. 
All right, we're just going to proceed. We're not going to listen to him. We're just going to go. We're going to go take care of some business right now here in Cyberlip. That's my jump, and that's my... There we go. Yeah. You see, we've got the sprites scaling in from the background there. So we saw that helicopter. It's making its way down there. That What's that dude hanging out there on the side of the building? Why is he doing that? Oh, yeah, this is your kind of invincibility as you make your way onto the stage there. Now, of course, the best side uh, beat-em-up games were what? The Simpsons Arcade? Absolutely. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles? Of course. And, and the home console, Streets of Rage 2. The best, the best side-scrolling shoot-em-up of all time. We didn't have those on the Neo Geo. In fact, you had very little in the way of licensed or really well-known you know, properties uh, on the Neo Geo. Um, the properties that became known on the Neo Geo were came from the Neo Geo, right? So we didn't see a lot of licensed games from third parties that were really widely known. It was its own thing. And the Neo Geo was amazing from the audio to the graphics capabilities, the sheer massive size uh, of this machine. It was just a fantastic, fantastic system that... Uh, only the richest kids had. And I'll share one quick story with you. Oh, no. Metal Slug is the best, Nate. We went ahead and already played Metal Slug 3. A little bit of that. Really, really fantastic. Golden Axe was good. Um, but, again, for my money, man, it was Streets of Rage 2. That was the, the best. Yeah, we have Sengoku 3. I have that here, too. But we are right at the top of the hour. Actually, I'll put on a little Sengoku 3 while we're going ahead and uh, telling this, this little story here. So I worked for a company called Sun Microsystems way back in the day. I'd spent 16 years at Sun, one of the greatest companies of all time. Anyway, um, we had been moving one of our offices in California. And uh, while stuff was getting cleared out and thrown away, I was about to grab my stuff, get on a plane to fly back to the East Coast where I live. Metal Slug X2, also really, really good game. Um, anyway, so I am gathered up my belongings and I'm going to walk out and there was just a pile of garbage, right? That had been piled up from people's offices as they were cleaning stuff out. And in that pile of garbage was a complete Neo Geo Gold system with three games just sitting there doing nothing. So I was like, well, this has to be a mistake. Somebody shouldn't be throwing this out. And so I uh, went to the guys that, you know, right, ran the, the, the floor there. And I'm like, whose is this? And they were like, well, um, this is this person's. And they just threw it away. And they're, they're gone. They don't want it. And I was like, what do you mean they don't want it? They said, it's going to get thrown out. I said, well, it's not getting thrown out because I will take it. They're like, help yourself. Absolutely. Go ahead and and uh, take it. So that is how I wound up with my Neo Geo gold system at home was because it was going to get thrown away. And had I not been looking in that direction, that thing would have made its way to a junkyard. And what a shame to have such an incredible system beat such an untimely fate. So, uh, yeah, that is how I got mine at home. So definitely worth, yes, trash and treasure of 100%. In this case, that person didn't even realize what a treasure they had. I had to go ahead and, you know, carry with me on the airplane. And then, of course, I was just telling people, do you know what this thing is? And uh, they're like, sir, please stop annoying people with your stories. Your tales of found Neo Geo treasure. And I'm like, oh, you know. I don't know if I can do that. You're asking a lot from me, man. Let's see. Uh, yeah, so Sengoku 3 also um, known as a really good side-scrolling beat-em-up, just like, you know, we were saying um, uh, Streets of Rage and th those types of games. Yeah, we didn't have very many of them. I think there may have been four or five in total on the, the officially on the Neo Geo. Um, but, you know, not the greatest side side scrolling beat em up but if that's what you want and this is the system you have yeah it's definitely a competent a competent game that will go ahead and scratch that itch so that is sen goku 3 
And of course, we are now just a couple of minutes past the top of the hour here. And that is going to do it for today's episode of Rewind. So remember, if you are a video game developer of any size from AAA to indie, make sure you head on over to AWS dot amazon.com forward slash game tech to discover the product solutions and services that we offer to help you on your cloud game development journey and if you're a beginner looking for a clear starting point to help you build a career or learn to produce games in the aws cloud we recommend that you start with an aws learning plan this set of on-demand courses will increase your knowledge of game servers and game analytics and help you grow your technical skills to solve real-world game development, compute, and analytics problems, and you can demonstrate your knowledge to the world by earning these badges. Head on over to aws.training forward slash game tech to start on your AWS for Games learning plan today. And of course, I want to give a special shout out to Waterflame and a thank you for allowing us to use his music here on Rewind. Make sure you head on over to his YouTube channel at Waterflame Music to check out his incredible work. And lastly, if you care about preserving the history of video games as much as I do, make sure you head on over to the Video Game History Foundation's website at GameHistory.org. They're doing incredible work to preserve the history of our industry for future generations. And I want to thank you for spending your Friday afternoon with me. Have a wonderful rest of your day and an awesome weekend. And we'll see you next week on Rewind. <laughs>